friends are back with another session here here we'll discuss about changes in the gi system that is gastrointestinal system during pregnancy as the baby grows he or she pushes the woman's stomach up this will lead to some respiratory discomfort also to the patient and also some acidity problem to the pregnant female so changes in the gi system gastric emptying time is normal in pregnancy which increases during labor so during labor gastric emptying time increases and it is normal in pregnancy gastron is a smooth muscle relaxant which is there in a high amount in pregnant females so it will relax the lower esophageal sphincter which leads to, leads to increased gi reflux from stomach to the esophagus the content is uh, reflux and increased chances of heartburn and pyrosis and increasing constipation thus increases the hemorrhoid chances in the pregnant female and vomiting during pregnancy and morning sickness is also a very common sign and found in a 50 or more than 50 to 70 percent of the females who are pregnant due to hcg this is mainly okay this is mainly due to hcg and also due to some other hormones like estrogen progesterone thyroxine prolactin placental growth hormone or leptin it results uh, upon itself or spontaneously after 14 to 16th week of pregnancy but when morning sickness is so extreme that you can't even function or can't even perform the daily uh, life activities this is known as uh, hyperemesis gravidarum this picture is taken from a front page of a book so there are varieties of books and num numerous books are written over hyperemesis gravidarum it is not a common thing it is a serious problem hyperemesis gravidarum is excessive vomiting when more it is more uh, no no longer the morning sickness it is extreme version of morning sickness it is excessive vomiting along with significant weight loss dehydration alpha losses hypokalemia starvation ketosis so significant weight loss due to extreme uh, extreme amount of fluid and electrolyte imbalance in the body which is uh, released and which is excreted from the body due to the vomiting not excreted is lost from the body okay so it will also leads to dehydration because of the uh, loss of water and fluids from the body and leading to alkyl losses which is uh, increasing ph because more bicarbonates now and uh, hydrogen ions are lost in the vomiting and hypokalemia is a loss of potassium and starvation ketosis when ketone bodies are formed in the blood okay now the problem arises due to this hyperemesis is vitamin k deficiency or thiamine deficiency and many more so vitamin k deficiency will lead to decreased prothrombin level which will lead to coagulopathy and vitamin k embryopathy intracranial hemorrhage in fetus so it is a major problem for fetus because of decreased prothrombin le level coagulopathy embryopathy and intracranial hemorrhages in fetus and also preterm labor, abruption placenta, and preeclampsia in the females. So these are the symptoms of hyperemesis gravidarum, which is a dry mouth, extreme thirst, faster heartbeat, excessive weight loss, less urination, and low BP due to less sodium in the uh, blood now. Okay. So thiamine defici uh, deficiency can lead to Wernicke's encephalopathy which is a triad of ataxia, confusion and ocular sign which is ophthalmoplasia and uh, risk factors of hyperemesis gravidarum is increased HCG so uh, increase uh, in the conditions where there is high amount of HCG can lead to hyperemesis gravidarum which is molar pregnancy, twin pregnancy, placento migali in cases of diabetes, marijuana use, female fetus, increase estrogen, hyperthyroidism and H. pylori infection mainly you can learn this like first child which is female having the more risk and the family history 
also is a very important risk factor for hyperemesis and molar pregnancy, twin pregnancy or placentomegaly which occur mainly in the diabetes and marijuana use. Drug u drugs use is a very danger for pregnant females and smoking is also dangerous for pregnant female which which can also lead to hyperemesis okay the management of vomiting in pregnancy is when there is mild to mo uh, moderate morning when there is only mild morning sickness then small uh, the female is prescribed to take small frequent meals in a gap of 2 2 hours or maybe 3 3 hours but in a small amount and vitamin b6 doxalamine pyridoxin or doxalamine, diphenhydramine, these are the prescription for mild morning sickness. High level of beta HCG, high placental weight, psychological and familial aspects, these are the risk factors for hyperemesis. High levels of beta HCG found in twin pregnancy, molar pregnancy, choriocarcinomas, but it is a cancer, and high placental weight and uh, psychological familial aspects, okay. So family history is important for hyperemesis and uh, so moderate uh, vomiting is promethazine, prochlorparazine, metoclopramide and onion citron. Moderate is with clo. It is prochlorparazine and clopramide. So chlorparazine and clopramide. So prochlorparazine and metoclopramide. And onion citron, which is a very uh, useful and very important drug in cases of vomiting, and promethazine. Severe in cases of severe vomiting, IV fluids are with thiamine and metoclopramide is given, uh, or IV promethazine is given, or maybe IV onion citron is given. In cases of intractable vomiting, enteral and parenteral nutrition is supplied, and uh, and uh, termination of pregnancy can also be done in the cases of intractable vomiting but this uh, these are very rare uh, in these days uh, difference between simple vomiting and hyperemesis gravidarum in simple vomiting simple vomiting is actually a symptom of pregnancy found in the 50 percent of the females and mostly found in the early in the morning it does not reduce any impairment to the health or do not restrict any normal day-to-day -day activities of pregnant uh, pregnant female Thus, uh, no treatment is generally required, only some prevention methods required. Well, in the hyperemesis gravidarum, uh, the female uh, uh, is uh, having uh, very much complications and very much prob serious problems and impairment of health, normal activities are also restricted in these females. So, treatment uh, is required in uh, hyperemesis cases. High risk factor for hyperemesis are first trimester, first pregnancy, female fetus and younger age low body mass means thin female younger age and history of motion sickness or migraine family history increase hcg level like in the h mole and twin pregnancy and in cases of unplanned pregnancy in the simple vomiting just you need to do is assure the female that it is not a major problem so be uh, assured and avoid fat and spicy foods take dry toast and biscuits this is important if the female is suffering from simple vomiting prescribe and uh, say him ask him to take just a uh, dry toast and biscuit and avoid fatty fatty foods like cheese or uh, or some junk foods like pizza burger and spicy foods and supplement b1 100 mg daily b1 is thiamine so supplement thiamine daily to avoid the thiamine deficiency and and also antiemetics if it is not controlled by some prevention methods give a trifluoparazine espazine 1 mg bd is twice a day and promethazine onion citron and take a plenty of fluids in 24 hours fruit juice okay so plenty of fluids and uh, are prescribed and asked to take uh, take it by the pregnant females and for the management of hyperemesis just learn that maintenance of hydration is very important in cases of hyperemesis or a simple vomiting even in the simple vomiting the female is asked to take 2.5 liter of water or fruit juices in a day and uh, in cases of hyperemesis uh, the maintenance of hydration is also very important here to control vomiting some antiemetics are prescribed in the hyperemesis 
if not uh, if not work through the oral route the anti emetics are prescribed through the uh, iv route maybe to correct the fluid and electrolyte imbalances to correct the metabolic disturbances acidosis or alkalosis supply of glucose is very important to protect the liver of the female and care of pregnancy is important to prevent the serious complications of severe vomiting is also very important in hyperemesis to prevent this vomiting symptoms uh, the female is asked to not lie down immediately after the meals and to take small amount and uh, and at a frequent intervals to drink in between meals not after a meal to avoid food that causes gastric irritation like fatty foods or spicy foods to avoid food and odors that trigger nausea and vomiting hyperemesis versus morning sickness hyperemesis uh, gravidarum is throwing up all day long does not uh, throwing up all day long the female is not feeling well throughout the day and does not get better with food can't la uh, can last into th even into the third trimester while a simple preg uh, simple vomiting or morning sickness can just uh, remain for 14 to 16 to be the a week of pregnancy in hyperemesis can't keep any food or drinks down can lead to severe dehydration in the morning sickness gets better when you eat uh, ask uh, ask the female to eat biscuits and dry toast avoid junk foods only last the first or second trimester can hold some foods and drink down so this is the difference between hyperemesis and morning sickness thank you so much for watching my video